welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith here on YouTube. One of the things that we do here, uh, aside from comparing and contrasting what people are saying in God's name to what God's Word actually says, but one of the things that we spend our time doing is debunking and showing you how false teachers and uh, like TBN scam artists, how they do what they do. And so Scripture warns us of those who exploit us with false words. These are blasphemers. They are breaking the commandment that says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Not only are they taking God's name in vain, they are doing so in such a way to twist Scripture explicitly for the purpose of making money. And so they are basically filling your heads with nonsense, playing on your own sinful nature or your greed or people who are in desperate financial situations uh, as if somehow, you know, I, my, I'm financially about ready to hit the rocks. And so as a Hail Mary pass, I'm going to send a thousand dollar seed offering to a, a TBN uh, televangelist as if somehow that will prove to God that I have faith so that he'll rescue me. Listen, um, that's not how God operates, and his gifts are not for sale, and his promises are not for sale. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to watch one of the, the the greediest scam artists literally on the planet. It's uh, Rod Parsley of the Breakthrough Program. If you've ever been flipping channels late at night, uh, you've probably run across this program. And it is designed to do one thing. It is not designed, by the way, to make disciples and to teach God's Word. This program is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that's take money out of your bank account and put it into Rod Parsley's bank account. And oftentimes, he brings people in studio with him to be his partners in crime, and watching him and his partners in crime team up together for the purpose of getting you to send money to them Oh, it's breathtakingly awful. And, I mean, it is slimy beyond all reason. Case in point, uh, today we'll be listening to uh, a, a teaching titled, Your New Season. Pa apparently they're decreeing and declaring that there's a new season coming for you. Uh, but you got to put money into the hands of the prophet. In fact, Coy Barker will say that fairly quickly in this uh, in this video. But let me roll this up and let's get to it and as we do you know an, an anatomy of scam artists uh, rod parsley and coy barker here we go you know there are just those moments aren't there yeah first time you met your spouse yeah a moment moments F first day of school yeah yeah quite a moment yeah when you first felt god place his hand on your heart to welcome you into his kingdom. Well, the first time I felt a televangelist's hands on my wallet, uh, it was a moment, indeed. Quite a moment. You're in for one of those today mm. on your breakthrough. I am. Just get ready. I'm ready. I'm not shouting. <laughs> no. I'm not running. I'm not screaming. No. Because the anointing is just too heavy it right is, now, I'm right now, right. Yeah, see, and there's Coy Barker, you know, just, oh, it is, yes. The anointing's too heavy for me to shout. Oh, it just is. And so now they're bouncing off of each other. What do you mean the anointing's too heavy for you to shout? What kind of nonsense is that? And so already the manipulation has begun. So he's put the bait out, trying to draw you in. And Coy Barker is there going, oh, yes, I affirm that what this fellow is saying is 100% real. It's totally true. Yeah, wait till you see I mean, the money on Coy Barker's body in his wardrobe. Wow, this guy is impressive in that sense. But we continue. Now, right now, right now. to take you from where you are, yeah. not just to where you dreamed you'd be, right. just a little bit beyond. Your yeah. wildest imaginations in God. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He's going to take you just a little beyond your wildest imaginations. Play it on people's greed. And note, note the gold rim glasses that Coy Barker is wearing. And how much do you think that suit cost? Boy, okay. God's a God of moments. Speak He's a God of timing. Speak He's a God of purpose. He's a God of design. 
he's a God of intention. Mm. And his intention for you is spelled out right here. That you Yeah, that would be repentance. God's intention is for us to repent, to be forgiven of our sins through the shed blood of Christ, and bear fruit in keeping with repentance and good works and love towards neighbor. Yeah, that's what we're called to. Be in health and prosper in every area of life, in all things that pertain to life. Now, let, let me point out what he just did there. He misquoted uh, Third John, and uh, this is a famous twisting of Scripture that televangelists of Rod Parsley's ilk engage in. And so if you uh, you have your Bible, you can open to Third John, or you can just take a look on my screen. Third John is a very short epistle. It's a, it's a letter one chapter long. And watch what happens here. Um, and le let me pull it up in the King James Version, because I think it'll help kind of prove the point. And of course, I got to make the text a little bit bigger. Um, so uh, the Apostle John is writing. He says, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And see, there you go. And so just live it out of context and, and see now there's a promise that God wants you to prosper and to be in health. Yeah, that's not what's going on there. Now, let me come back to the ESV, which is a, a good modern translation. Not the only good one, but one of the better ones out there. And we're going to note here, it's like, have you ever written a letter to somebody? And, you know, and so when, when we're in school, we're taught how to write a letter. You know, you put the date on it. You put the address and the name of the person you're sending it to. And then usually it begins with, dear so-and-so. And then the opening part of the letter is, is something like, I hope that this letter finds you well. I pray that things are going well with your family, that your wife is, is doing better, and you know, heard, heard she was in the hospital, and that the kids are better behaved. I heard that they had gotten detentions, you know, something like that, you know. And so usually the you know, a letter, and, and you know, we have, you know, this is, letter writing is like a lost art, by the way, uh, but, you know, they still teach it. Uh, but that's what's going on here in the opening portion of this letter is that this is the, you know, just what wishing you well, hope things are going well. And guys like Rod Parsley take it out of context and turn it into like a universal promise from God when it's not. So here's what John writes to the, the elder, to whom, uh, to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. This is just the introduction to the letter. So note how he's taken it out of context. Now he's also taking 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3 out of context. Let's take a look at that. 2 Peter 1 and, uh, and verse 3, uh, his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Now, that's the ESV. And so you'll note, by the way, if you take the time to read Second Peter, if you haven't ever read it, it's a very important letter in the New Testament because it's one of the most explicit letters warning us about people like, well, Rod Parsley. And, uh, you know, and so you'll note when we just read this, you know, just read it in passing, it didn't say anything about any promises that God's going to bless us, you know, with wealth or health or anything like that. In fact, let me read a few pa uh, portions of uh, Second Peter here to kind of lay our groundwork. Second Peter 1.1, 1, 1, Simon Peter, uh, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, uh, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours, by the righteousness of, uh, of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Great Christology here, by the way. And you'll note that our faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins is on the same level. Uh, God is no respecter of persons. It's on the same level. It has equal standing as the faith that, uh, that Peter has. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by 
which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is the world in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, I make every effort to supp supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness. You kind of get the idea here. And then he goes on um, you know, to remind them of the, the vision that he had on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he talks about Scripture itself and their experiences, and listen to what he says. 2 Peter 1.16, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when uh, he received honor and glory from God the Father, the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have a prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you will do well to pay attention, as, a lamp, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day... Uh, dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing that, for, that, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture, Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation, for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men were spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So here, Peter is pointing us, as he's getting ready to go to his death, and he's writing this very shortly before he was martyred, and he was martyred by being crucified upside down. And the reason he was crucified upside down is because he did not consider himself worthy to suffer the same type of death as Jesus did. And so upon his protestation, they decided to crucify Peter upside down, which took, it took longer for him to die that way, by the way. And so he's as he's getting ready to go to his death, he's pointing us back to the written word of God. And then in chapter 2, listen to this, uh, 2 verse 1, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Their destruction is not asleep. And so what we're going to see here is an example of the very thing that Peter warns us about. As, you know, it, Rod Parsley and uh, Coy uh, Barker, they're going to be exploiting people with false words in greed, because this is all about making money. But fascinating that he would invoke Second Peter. You know, that's some dangerous work for a false teacher to do, because what if somebody actually ended up reading the whole letter? then they, their, their gig would be up. But uh, the reason why they're so confident is because so many people are biblically illiterate, even within the visible uh, church, within visible Christianity. They, they have no worries that anyone's going to you know, uh, confront them regarding what they're doing here. So they continue. Life and godliness already provided for That's you. Right. Today, something's going to happen <laughs> to give you... Now, did you hear that... That's Koi Barker supposedly speaking in tongues, but that's not tongues. That's gibberish. You read Acts chapter 2. The gift of tongues is the miraculous ability to speak in a human language so that you can proclaim the gospel to somebody in their own native language. So it's a language you've never never studied. So if like for instance, if you know you were traveling and you you know, and somehow God gave you the true biblical gift of tongues, and there was somebody there from Swahili in your presence, and all of a sudden you spoke perfect Swahili to preach the gospel to them, that's the gift of tongues. But sitting there going that that ain't tongues. That's just gibberish. And this is all part of a con show, by the way. Access Speak to everything you need. Speak Access. That's, Speak. that's a word for that's you right a now. Big word. Access big word. Access is being made available to you today. Oh, wow. Access is being made. Really? Oh, I hope. Oh. And so note now here that they actually kind of put a timeline on this. Is the access is available today. today. And now. You, you got to act now, man. This access may not be here in just a few hours. So you, you, and so no, I mean, all of the manipulation techniques, they're playing on your greed or playing upon your bad circumstances, promising you things that God has not promised. And oh, it's access is being offered to you now. Yeah, this is all a con. So get ready for it. 
You're going to have to get your heart wide open. Some of you are already saying, I, I'm going to get it. Today's yes. my day. Yes. I'm going to get it. You know, it's, I, I feel like I've won the Christian lotto. Oh, oh yay. I'm finally going to get it. It's, it's my turn to win. The ones we are talking to. Dr. Barker, thanks for being back Love with us. you, Pastor. Now, I know, I know a little bit about where you're going, oh, yeah. but I don't know the whole path. <laughs> so I'm ready to get started. Amen. Take us into that place. God has prepared this moment. Mm -hmm for you and I, I to connect it. to your friends and partners. I believe it. It's not just another day. No, I no. mean, look at the ring that guy's wearing. Look at the wealth. Look at, wow. I mean, how many tens of thousands of dollars do you think that guy's wearing? Do you think he's wearing a Rolex too? God moment. Mm -hmm. mm. When he started this ministry just then, he said there are moments. Yeah, moments. If I've ever heard the voice of God, and it sounds this like you have it. God. This is it. Doors. Oh, are if I've ever heard. Oh, this is the moment, man. You don't want to miss the moment. Ah, quick, honey. Where's my credit card? I don't want to miss the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gonna open. Things are gonna happen. You're gonna say, how in the world? What things are gonna happen? There's going to be a supernatural favor mm -hmm. that is going to cover you like a blanket. Jesus. Like a snuggie. Wow. Supernatural Snuggie is coming. Woohoo! Wow. Uh, wait a second. Why should I believe that a supernatural Snuggie is on its way to me? And those that have resisted to give you what's supposed to be in your hands right, already. Right. Oh, yeah. See, I'm a victim. I would have this, this wealth already if it wasn't for them. Yeah. No, no, oh, man. This is manipulation par excellence. And again, it's all about getting money out of your bank account and into theirs. Yeah, we continue is going to give you a promotion mm. and open a door for yes, you yes. you can't not open the spirit of god is so heavy mm. on this program right oh. now this very moment listen carefully paul said it like this first first corinthians 2 9 he said your eyes have not oh, seen god your ears have never heard. No. It's never entered into your natural heart. Never. What God has already mm. prearranged yeah. and prepared mm. yeah. for you. So you got to understand this is Ooh. a... Ooh, it's my moment. Ah, I've never imagined this before. It's which is a little beyond... Wait a second here. Is that what... <laughs> Is that what that passage in 1 Corinthians 2 is about? Was it 1 Corinthians 2 or 2 Corinthians 2? Let's try 1 Corinthians 2. Yep, here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's apply our three rules for sound biblical exegesis, which are context, context, context. And uh, note what's going on here. Let's see if 1 Corinthians 2, 9 is promising you and me a moment. This moment right now, but you got to act now because, oh, you know, God's going to do something now. <clears throat> First Corinthians 2 verse 6. Among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it's not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of, of God, with which God decreed before the age is for our glory. So none of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has see, seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the, deep, de the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except for the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Oh, this isn't talking about my moment now where I'm going to all of a sudden become rich or experience some kind of big breakthrough or turnaround. Yeah, these guys are twisting God's word. They're blaspheming God. And doing so exactly how Peter warned that in you know it, exploiting people with false words. 
brand new season. Yeah. Yeah. God said he's going to unveil his mighty oh. arm of power, and you will see the mighty supernatural. Yes. Things are going to happen so quickly mm. for you. Things, he things, man, for you. And listen to how Rob Parsley's playing off this guy. Uh, th th oh, man. If you're at this point paying attention to them, and even at all, thinking this is legit you you've already got your credit card out these guys have already manipulated you and won the word of the lord when you hear the instruction yeah. and you obey the instruction right. yeah. of me and the prophet today hear me there's oh, so we got to obey the instruction of he and the prophet prophet rob parsley so if i obey the instruction then what's going to happen coy alignment yes. in your life that's going to cause things to begin happening. You need the wisdom. You needed the guidance. Things are going to happen if I obey what the prophet says. You needed the prayer covering. Mm. And God has connected you into mine and Pastor Rod's life mm. for this moment. For More manipulation. About yesterday. Forget the things which are behind you. This is a new season. <laughs> Philippians 13, just look it up in context. It has nothing to do with what he's talking about here. Every passage he's touching, he's ripping these passages out of context and then weaving them into his tapestry of exploitation, which is what he's doing here. In this new season, it's entered into a sea. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The word of the Lord saying things Jesus. that were hard yeah. are about to become That's easy. That's it. So oh, yeah, like algebra. It's always been hard. Things that seem so difficult God are going to happen supernaturally it, in your life. You're going to see that son yeah. come into a powerful Prophesy. relationship. Prophesy. You're going to mm. see that mate <laughs> come into a relationship. To God. You're going to see your household yeah. come to know the power of freedom uh -huh. in God. There is a new season yeah. that God's birthing into your life right now. Really, just because I happen to be watching Rod Parsley. There's a new season. God's going to birth in my life. Uh-huh, right. And if you believe this, you know, I, I got a wall in China I can sell you. Really cheap, too. The word of the Lord to yeah. you is, there is a new season. Now, listen carefully. Okay. Listen carefully. God gave me a word. Here's what the Lord said to me. It like it come up off the pages when I had my face in the carpet. Yeah. Saying God, I, I don't think you ever put your face on a carpet unless you were drunk. Pastor Rod and I get together. What is the word mm. that he and I is to connect uh -huh. to the heart yeah. of the partners and friends? God. And God said to understand the meaning of the word time. Mm. Time, <laughs> really, that's what God said. You got to understand the meaning of the word time. Okay, I can look that up in a dictionary if you like, but okay. Is a window of opportunity oh. that has been created by a God word. Woo. A window of opportunity created by a God word. Well, you know, windows close, you know. Oh, you don't want to miss this opportunity. See, these guys just want to help you. God has created a window of opportunity through his God word, through the prophet. Rod Parsley, he's just wanting to help you, man. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity, do you? And God has given Pastor Parsley and I a God word mm. to create a God moment, moment so that you can step. Now, hear carefully. So he, God gave him a God word to create a God moment so that I can step. Uh -huh. And and what would that step involve? Would it involve... You know, sending in a seed offering to Rod Parsley's ministry. It is crucial. It is important. It is critical yeah. that you move with the hand of God. Amen. Move. That you move. Oh, it's critical, man. You, you don't want to miss this opportunity. With the voice of God. Mm. I see the Spirit of God going before you, making crooked paths straight. I see the Holy Ghost going before you. When you get there, that's supposed to be a difficult situation. Yeah. God's going to make it easy. You're going to find a contract that you thought could not be signed. There. Be signed before Prophesy. you even ask God is doing contract prophecies uh-huh 
is working in your business. He's working for a promotion for you. He's working to cause a turner. Yeah, you want you want a promotion at work, right? This is an opportunity. You can finally. It was like magic. Okay in your family but you must hear god has given this word, word. and word. opened up a door yeah. opened up a window yeah. Oh, yeah. of opportunity yeah. that you yeah, must they, it's gonna close if you don't act quick step through you guys now hear me carefully i'm okay hear me carefully it's important that you don't let your mind no your logic right stop right stop you whatever you do turn your brain off because <laughs> your brain's sitting there going this guy's a sleaze ball. Run away. Change the channel, man. But hide the checkbook and put that credit card down. And so he said, don't listen to your brain. Don't listen to your brain. Why? Because your brain knows, man. This is all an emotional appeal. So you got to turn that brain off because your brain's going to stop you from sending your money to them. Yeah. Oh, man. This is, this is high, high manipulation here. From the miracle of God. I hear the voice of God. Miracles. Miracles. Oh. Miracles. God said miracle. No, he's not. I receive it. Are Lord. going to happen in I your life. It, miracles mm. are going to be released, saith the Lord. You need right now. Hear the voice of God. No, thus saith the Lord. No. Uh uh. Yeah. You might want to read up on uh, what happens in Scripture to those who blaspheme God's name. Yeah, God talks about him not holding them guiltless. Yeah, you might be wearing the gold right now, Coy. Yeah, but on that day when Jesus returns, he, he ain't going to be pleased to see you. And you're not going to be thrilled to see him. I assure you of that. Go to that phone and give $50. There it is. Or $100. <laughs> but there are many of you, hear the voice of God, there are many of you that's like me and Pastor Parsley. You have to sacrifice a thousand dollars and say god in this new season uh, to activate to step uh, through the window i am going to give a one thousand dollar sacrifice yes, god, it, do i need to say any more the, these people are utter charlatans there's only one reason why rod parsley's breakthrough is on television and on the internet. And it has nothing to do with making disciples, calling you to repentance and the forgiveness of sins, and instructing you in what Scripture says. There's only one reason that if that program exists. It's to whip you up into an emotional frenzy to get you to believe with your emotions. I feel this is from God. And, uh, oh, the prophet has got a word from God and the word is miracles, but I got to act. I got to sacrifice a $1,000. Uh-huh. You understand that scripture teaches us to pray to God, our Father who art in heaven. Holy is your name. You see, for everybody who's a Christian, God is their Father in heaven. We are adopted children of God because Christ has bled and died for our sins and redeemed us from slavery. And God cares for us as father, as a father to us. We don't need to purchase his provision. We don't need to purchase or sacrifice money in order for God to give us the good things that we need. And by the way, wealth isn't all that it's cracked up to be. God hasn't promised you wealth. In fact, in that same prayer that I began, we pray this, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And that's what we pray for. We don't pray for super abundance or any of that nonsense. We pray for God to give us daily bread so that we can feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, take care of ourselves and our children, and also have a little left over so that in generosity we can care for others. Rod Parsley is a snake. And he is doing the epitome of what, well, Peter said. These, he's a man who exploits you with false words in his greed. That's what he's all about. So if you found this helpful, please share it, especially if you know somebody who's listening to guys like Rod Parsley or Coy Barker and think that they are actual men of God. Send this video to them to warn them, to open their eyes, to turn their brains on, open up their Bible and see that they are being deceived and exploited. 
Yeah, do that. Share this with them. And of course, all the information on how you can support us. And I can't promise you blessings from God or anything like that. The only thing I can promise is that by making it possible for us to pay our bills, it makes it possible for us to keep producing resources like this. And all the information on how you can support us is down below. And, um, and of course, until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Thank you.